Young fella took a pummeling yesterday in Devonport. They make them pretty tough there, don't they? <laughs> Only in Tasmania, mate. Honestly, I'm glad I wasn't one of those um, voicing mothers on the sidelines and it wasn't one of my boys. I might have had a few choice words to say to the Prime Minister, but uh, I can tell you, look, it's, it's all in good fun. Nobody got hurt. Um, that's the main thing. But I would suggest to the Prime Minister, he's going to get on Tasmanian sporting fields. He may want to put the correct boots on. I that tell might you, have saved him the fall. I tell you what, he would have been thanking his lucky stars <laughs> that the young fella wasn't injured because that would, have, that would not have been good for the campaign. How's I it all know. looking? How's it all looking in Braddon? Um, I haven't. Uh, I've been down in Hobart, Monsestan for the last week and a half. Um, that's all very interesting. Obviously, I think Wilkie's got it wrapped up down there in Clark. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and as I imagine uh, Labor will hold their seat in Franklin. I guess our preferences. Uh, we'll help others uh, in lines, that being Brian, uh, and who knows in Bass and Braden, I'm not really quite sure. So I'll get a much bigger view of what's going on in Braden. I'm finishing up here today, tomorrow, and obviously on the polling boost as well Saturday. Uh, so I'll get a much better feel for that by lunchtime today. But, um, you know, I think um, people have already, you know, they've had enough. We've had 20% of the people in Tasmania, they've already gone to the voting, gone to poll already. I find it bizarre how these guys... Uh, throw these election promises and that the last couple of days. I just want those guys out there to know people have switched off about two weeks beforehand. They're sick of it. After three weeks of running into an election, they've had a gut fall. They're not even listening to what you're saying anymore. So I'd say in the future, if you've got great policies to sell and your costings, you may want to get them out before the election's called. That's what I would do. Yeah, uh, and, and even beyond Tasmania, huge numbers of people right across the country have already voted. Now, one of the big factors that's going to help people decide which way to go is wages this time around. We saw some numbers out yesterday. They're going to go backwards for another 18 months. That is a nightmare scenario for whoever wins this weekend, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be a really, really tough three years coming up. There's no doubt about that once again. And, and I will be pushing this. And I know that both um, leaders have been very silent on this. There's $16 billion worth of stage three tax cuts that will be starting, I think, next year. Uh, 16 billion bucks, uh, I would rather pay that forward. That is going to richest Australians. And that is including people like you and I. We do not need that tax cut, I can tell you. But there is plenty of people out there right now that do not have a house to live in. They cannot, they're sitting in A&E for hours on end. I've still got massive problems in aged care. They're still getting, getting fed the same crap they were getting fed before the Royal Commission. We have some really, really big issues going on in this country and it's only going to get tougher in the next three years. Those state street tax cuts, they have to go and I'm coming for them. Saving of $16 billion a year where we can pay them forward to, play, to housing, health and aged care and get it damn well fixed for once and for all. They have been legislated, though. Is there any way, in your view, that that overturns? You know, I think, um, yeah, we can, you know what, we can go and overturn that. Why can't we? We just say, you know what, this happened before COVID. COVID has now cost us a fortune. I do not want to leave this debt to our grandchildren. Something needs to be done. And right now people are doing that tough. We need to pay that money forward elsewhere and that's what needs to be done. Well, so they... I want to say those leaders have some guts and come up and be honest to the people and say they're going because we need that money elsewhere. Labor is going to announce its its policy costings today. It's likely going to say that debt and deficit will be higher, will be even higher than where it is now. How would you feel about that? Um, look, I think the debt is way out of control. There's no doubt about that. But we need to clean up. That means we need to rein in spending. And by going out there and making all these promises where some of them just do not need to be made and things do not, you know, lose for taxpayers' money, they've had enough of it. Start targeting properly and stop and stop spending on stupid things like stage three tax cuts. They've got to go. I want that $16 billion injected elsewhere where it is needed. It's as simple as that. It's smart policy. It is smart, it's smart where we're sending our taxpayers' money, and that's what needs to be done. Does it show to you that both parties are too scared of the consequences of calling for cuts? Oh, I have no... I have... I have um, no, you know, I have no doubt that that is a problem. But I can tell you what, there's only a very small minority of us that are going to get those tax cuts and they're not going to the people that need it. I'm sure if the people knew that you were going to slug the highest paid, uh, the highest paid people in this country, I tell you what, you'd win more votes out of it. Have the guts to call it. Come out and call it. We need that $16 billion a year injected elsewhere. OK, Jackie Lambie, thanks for your time as always. We'll talk to you soon. Good luck this weekend.